Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to another game for the, the Short Games Theater. This is another very interesting little freeware title known as Judith. Actually made by the uh, same guy that made v v v v v v v v v But this is actually a fairly different game. It's, uh, it's pretty much just going to tell us a story. We're going to do a little guiding of our character here, whose name is Jeff. He's going to meet his lady fair, or his mistress, I suppose. And she is waiting for him at the end of this rather odd corridor. And there she is. Now there is quite a bit of dialogue in this game. I uh, hopefully left enough time in there so you can read it, but I will be trying to summarize as best I can. Pretty much we have Jeff and Emily here. They're having a relationship in secret due to them both being married, but apparently they love each other quite a bit. Uh, we see here that Jeff has apparently given Emily a rather... Uh, nice gift of a necklace that we probably will never be seeing, but needless to say, it, it's probably one of a very high value. But they have actually come out to this rather secluded mansion of sorts to have a romantic interlude. And it seems now we're going to just race inside and have a romantic tryst. You can see here we actually have a very nice, lavish garden. And we learn from Jeff that apparently this building has been abandoned for years. The local townspeople will have some kind of superstitious notion regarding it. They seem to stay away from it. And then with that, we run after our lady fair, who's, well, seemingly evaded us somehow. By searching in the first room available to us, we find what appears to be a library, but no Emily. So we have one other room that we can possibly check. And yet again, we find an empty room. This room is actually a bedroom. As we scan over to the left, we'll actually see a rather large bed. With the soft tick-tocking of the clock, we should go ahead and examine the bed to get the story going. Now, between the different sections of the game, we're going to kind of be jumping back and forth through time. You can actually tell who is talking depending on the color of the text. You'll notice now that we are seeing what is kind of yellowish and blue text. This is denoting new characters we haven't actually met yet. But we get the idea that one of the characters is having rather odd dreams about a crying man. And 
right now are actually under the control of one of those other characters. And, well, we might as well go ahead and re-examine that other room. Under the control of this new character, we do have some new options. And even though it's a bit hard to tell, we can actually examine this bookcase. And to our surprise, we find a rather mysterious stone passageway behind the bookcase. Now, most of the doors down this corridor are locked, except for the first one. Which apparently leads to a rather large storehouse of gold. We can probably assume from the text that we are playing as a woman, considering that she's referring to her husband. But upon further investigation of the goal, we find that for some reason it's actually coated in blood. And the only piece of treasure that's not coated in blood is a rather odd necklace sitting in the back. And seemingly forgetting the mounds of bloody treasure around us, our character decides, well, maybe we should go ahead and try the necklace on. So, let's go ahead and do that. You can see no harm. And oddly enough, it fits perfectly. We have a nice new necklace. And I guess we should just ignore the mounds of bloodied gold for now. But by investigating the first nearby door, we can find that it's locked. But there's a rather mysterious noise coming from the other side. I guess we shouldn't worry about that too much. Yep, we have another three looking normal doors, all locked. And I get the feeling that at some point we are going to be investigating all these. But for right now, about the best we can do is, well, just get out of the secret passageway and try to continue with our story progression. We do want to make sure that our husband doesn't find out that we've been going into his secret treasury. But it seems our character has have has had a little, uh, you know, Jiminy Cricket, little conscience speaking up, saying maybe we shouldn't have taken that necklace. Something about it just doesn't feel right, especially with all the other bloodied mounds of treasure can only kind of assume that this necklace maybe wasn't gotten through uh, proper channels. So, with that place back down, I think we, uh, we have a clear conscience now. And we can actually finish up this particular day. Pretty much each one of those doors is going to be for each particular day. And our character seems to be trying to justify to herself why her husband might be wanting to hide such treasures.
And here we actually find the name of the person we were just playing is the name of the game itself, Judith. We also find that she pretty much doesn't want her husband to know what she's been up to, so she does tell a little bit of a fib. But her husband seems to be quite understanding and, well, actually quite reassuring. Maybe she was just blowing the whole situation out of proportion. Meanwhile, Jeff is still trying to figure out where Emily might have gone to. She's not in the bed. So maybe there was something we'd overlooked in the previous room. But knowing what we know now about the secret passage, we can definitely feel a bit reassured that indeed we did overlook something in this room. So, we can actually go back over to the bookcase. But upon examining it, we only get the information that well, there seems to be military history books on the bookshelf. We apparently can't operate the secret door. And we also find that we can actually examine every other bookcase in the library. Perhaps over the uh, the time change there might have been a change in how to trigger the secret compartment so hmm maybe we overlooked something or I mean maybe Emily just left but such is not the case we're actually locked in And it doesn't look like there's anything else to examine in the bedroom. So what you actually need to do is examine a very particular bookcase. You'll find that this piece of fiction section over here has one book that seems to be out of place regarding the Civil War. So, all we merely have to do is put the Civil War book with the rest of the military history. And that should hopefully trigger the, uh, the secret tunnel to be opened up. And who knows, maybe Emily did somehow manage to open up the secret tunnel and find her way in here. Perhaps she's trapped. Perhaps she needs our help. Well, upon entering the first door, we find that most of the mounds of bloody treasure are gone. But there's still this rather mysterious necklace here sitting in the back. And wouldn't you know it? This is actually the necklace that Jeff gave to Emily. That's got to mean that Emily has to be somewhere back here. But where is she? So, haunted by even more unpleasant dreams, Judith decides to return to the secret tunnel 
and maybe do a little bit more exploring. Now we already investigated the treasury, but we can actually open the second door now. And what waits for us inside is truly a ghoulish sight. Blood sprays on the wall, and what is this? Some poor man shackled and bloodied. Who could have done this? Four years. As the screams of pain echo through this torture chamber, apparently we find a bloodied and beaten man who says he's been chained here for four years. Could Judith's husband have been doing this? This horribly grotesque activity? Well, the horribly beaten man wants nothing more than an escape from his torment. But Judith is rather unsure if she can do such an act. I mean, clearly the man is in pain, but can Judith bring herself to become a killer? And that's when the horribly tortured man... Well, pretty much threatens Judith with telling her husband about her coming in here. I mean, really, what would Judith's, Judith's husband do if, well, he found out what she had found out? And if you try to talk some reason into the prisoner, he just thinks that you're trying to taunt him on him with the sweet release but we need to get out of here this place is just too awful I just need some air but what is what's Judith supposed to think I mean is her is her husband a monster why would he be doing this to that poor man And what's Judith supposed to do to keep her secret from her husband? It almost seems like her only answer to the problem is to put him out of his misery and to keep her secret to herself. But, rather oddly, her response seems to be needing to find out all of her husband's secrets to truly love him. Seems a rather odd response to me, but... Yeah, I think it's time to finish up this day.
Jeff has managed to find some piece of Emily, but he's still actually found no hide nor hair of her. But, much as Judith is able to progress further and further through the secret tunnel, so is Jeff able to, well, find out pretty much what Judith is finding out. Such as in this horribly bloodied up, well, torture chamber. But, Jeff's first assumption is wondering whether or not this blood might be Emily's. I mean, is, is she in some type of danger? And just as Judith's dreams become more bloodied and macabre, so too do her discoveries regarding her husband. First we found treasure, then we found a tortured soul, and what does the third room hold for us? Well, at least I suppose the prisoner must not have talked to Judith's husband yet. But we can't be holding out for too much longer in hopes that uh, he won't decide to rat us out. So with the third room, we find an armory full of sharp, dangerous weapons. But something stands out amongst all these weapons, and that's the fact that they are all drenched in blood. Bloodied from combat? Or possibly bloodied from torturous acts. Just more and more questions pile up about Judith's husband. But what stands out most among these weapons is one particular dagger. That it appears that Judith can use to go and, well, put that prisoner out of his misery. And that's pretty much our only option for now. I mean, we'll be doing him a service, uh, obviously. It's not just for our own security. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll be doing what's best for everybody. And with that, we've put the prisoner out of his misery. Judith's husband will never know of her transgressions into his tunnel. And maybe the prisoner can actually get some sort of uh, peace now. Oh dear, I've forgotten to put back that bloody knife. I guess we should go ahead and do that, I mean... Can't have any evidence of what we've been doing. I mean, what would Judith's husband do if he actually found out that she knew what she knew?
that Jeff investigates, the more worried he gets about Emily. I mean, the bloodied room, her necklace, and now we find plenty of weapons that could possibly be used to harm a human being. I mean, Emily has to be around here somewhere, right? So we find the bloody dagger that Judith had used to put the prisoner out of his misery. But the first thing that pops into Jeff's mind is, could this have been used against Emily? I mean, he obviously cares about her very deeply. So with each passing day, the secrets that Judith has to hold on to grow heavier and heavier around her neck. And, well, she's kind of running out of doors, which means we're running out of days. Really, though, she's still mostly concerned with trying to figure out well, what type of person her husband really is. So that just leaves the next door to investigate and what lies behind it, but a rather lush and sunshine garden. Why does this seem so out of place? Oh, well, we don't have much time to think about it. Because upon finding a nearby shovel, it strikes Judith. Well, it's probably not really dignified to leave that poor, poor man's body laying on the grounds of the torture chamber. That maybe he deserves something better. Maybe to be buried amongst all these beautiful flowers underneath this nice, bright sunshine. And with that, Judith buries the stranger and wish, wi wishes him, well, a restful, or, well, a restful reprieve. Still, though, is she overlooking the fact that, well, her husband might notice the man missing, or have noticed the man dead? Well, at this point... I don't think she's really thinking that clearly.
Jeff. Well, we find ourselves still unsure of where Emily is, but much like Judith had stumbled upon the garden, so too does Jeff happen upon an empty but beautiful garden. And rather easily, we stumble across that weird patch where Judith buried the prisoner. But, could someone else have been buried there as well recently? I mean, we can't be sure, but uh, some malicious person might have actually buried Emily alive while we were tearing through the uh, the mansion. And there's a, well, like Jeff says, there's only one way to find out. But all we find in the grave is the skeleton of the prisoner. But upon further investigation, we actually see there's something else among the prisoner's remains. So let's go ahead and rifle his corpse. Ah, we found a key. And Jeff seems to think that maybe it's not the most dignified thing to be buried in an unmarked grave. But really, we need to find Emily. She's obviously in danger. And who is this man that Judith Creek keeps dreaming of? Could it possibly be symbolic of Jeff? Or just more symbolic of what she's actually been seeing or assuming to be what's inside her actual husband's mind? Well, as we now enter the secret tunnel, we find well, all the doors are closed and locked off, but that one mysterious gated door at the end has now been opened. Let's go ahead and check the first door here, see what lies inside. A rather mysterious plain of dead and barren trees. Oh no.
So was there really some terrible storm? Has Judith been meshing reality and fantasy? What's what's really been going on? I mean, what's what's her husband really been doing? Has he been doing anything? Well, we have two final doors, and he's waiting behind this door right here. Let's see what he has to say. Well, we've come this far. We don't have any other options. We need to know all the secrets. So we obtain the final key and leave our husband behind at his pool of tears. And what do we find behind the door? And what we find is our inescapable fate. Because we love this man, there's no escape. So all that leaves is Jeff and Emily. What awaits Jeff? Well, there's plenty of locked doors. We don't get to see the barren wasteland. We don't get access to the Lake of Tears. So all that leaves is the one final door. And what waits behind that for Jeff? <laughs>